Hi everyone and welcome to this new tutorial which is the first of a series of three that'll go over how to create your very own generators, like those that already come with Autograph. This generator will be able to adapt to all formats, no matter the composition, in line with responsive design principles. This means that even if you put these elements in place in a composition with a full HD format, Changing the format while using the composition will modify the positioning of these elements within this format. Keep in mind that when creating a composition, you have to define a format, but this format can be overridden when using the composition. The format isn't fixed and can be modified at any time. In this tutorial, we'll look at different methods that allow us to position an element in a composition relative to its format. As an example, we'll put a generator in place that simulates a dirty lens with fingerprints and dust. To do that, we'll start with a full HD composition and add a noise generator. Remember that by default, most of Autograph's generators are infinite in size, no matter the format. These generators extend much further than the composition frame. This is because when adding the generator, the output format parameter is set to unbounded mode. But by changing this to composition format mode, we can limit the extent of the generator to the composition borders. If we change the composition display, by changing the format in the viewer, we can see that this time the noise adapts to the composition format. This is really important because it means that no matter the composition format, the noise will cover the entire surface, but not extend further. So let's go ahead and change the noise parameters by increasing its frequency, we'll increase its contrast too, and we'll reduce its level in order to reduce the number of dots on the screen before adding a defocus modifier onto the noise. This modifier allows us to simulate dust dispersed on the lens, especially if we increase its defocus value. We can go back and increase the noise level parameter to simulate even more dust on the lens. Let's continue by importing an image sequence into the project panel and changing the frames per second to 1. If we double click on the image sequence, it'll be displayed in the viewer and we can see that there are 6 different fingerprints numbered from 0 to 5. We can use this image sequence directly in the composition and position it relative to the composition format by adding an anchor to composition generator onto its position parameter. Let's start by indicating that we want to position this element at the top left of the composition and that we want to use the top and left sides of the image we want to place as a reference point. Now, if we change the composition format in the viewer, we can see that the position of the fingerprint automatically adapts in relation to the composition format. If we want to move the fingerprint, we can just add a math modifier and set values for X and Y, all while maintaining relative positioning. But here, we want to spread these fingerprints all over the lens, and to do that, we'll use the instancer. Let's start by opening up the template information so we can connect the fingerprints. If we gradually increase the dimension size parameter, the same fingerprint will appear on top of itself in the same position multiple times. But what we want is for a random fingerprint to be selected for each new instance. To do that, we'll start by adding a hold frame modifier to this template. This is going to freeze an image in this image sequence. Since the frame rate of the image sequence has been set to 1 frame per second, we can just advance by 1 second to change the fingerprint image. If we give a little more space to this parameter, we see that the numerical value set as input or output is in fact defined in seconds. So we'll add a random generator to this parameter that will evolve between values of 0 to 5 randomly generating only integers that'll depend on the instance generated. This way, each new fingerprint that's added according to the dimension size will be different. 
Let's fold up the template section and focus on the instance transform section to separate the X and Y positions. We'll start off by adding a random generator onto the X value, which for now will have values set to between negative 500 and 500. By setting the random generator to instance mode, each instance the instancer adds will randomly select a value between negative 500 and 500. In order to adapt to the composition format, we can connect these values to a composition info generator. As the name suggests, this generator retrieves information about the composition, like the height or width in pixels, the smallest or largest of the two, the duration, or the number of frames per second. Let's stay in width mode because right now we're working with the X position, and since the origin of the composition 00 is at the center of the image, a value of 1920 is outside of the composition frame. But the composition info generator also has a multiplier parameter that allows us to divide this value by 2 if we set it to 0 0.5, and so we can go up to a maximum of 960 pixels. To set this positioning between 960 and negative 960, we can do a copy link and paste link between the minimum and the maximum, and then add a math modifier in multiply mode and set the value to negative 1. By increasing the dimension size value in order to increase the amount of instances, they're going to appear along a line situated between negative 960 and 960. So we're going to do the same operation for the Y position with a composition info generator in height mode this time. And we'll use the multiplier again and set it to 0.5 to divide this value by 2. We'll create a link between the minimum and maximum again, onto which we'll add a math modifier in multiply mode again with a value of negative 1 in order to make these values evolve from between negative 540 and 540. Right now, the distribution between these two boundaries isn't done because we haven't set varying to instance mode. You'll notice that right now, the fingerprint distribution is only on this diagonal line, and that's because the seed that generates this random value is the same for X and Y. We can change the seed value for Y so that the fingerprints are distributed over the entire format. Adjusting the dimension size lets us define how many fingerprints will be added onto the lens. And if we change the composition format in the viewer, for example, the distribution will always be uniform, no matter the format. All of the instancer's transform parameters can be controlled by a random generator. Here, for example, we can make the rotation evolve between negative 180 and 180 degrees, always according to the number of instances. We can also control the size or even the opacity for each of these fingerprints. The last point we'll go over in this tutorial is layer duration. By selecting our two layers and pressing the V key, we can bring up the visibility keyframes, represented by these round keyframes and by the bounds of the block located just above. If we want our generator to be used no matter the composition duration, we have to make the layer duration infinite. If we want to define a layer with an infinite duration, we can just select the last visibility keyframe, delete it, and do the same for the second layer. Our layers start to appear from the first visibility keyframe and continue to appear infinitely, beyond the composition duration. So we've created a generator that is capable of randomly positioning elements, whatever the format, and with an infinite duration. In the next tutorial, we'll go over how to create a control panel in order to display these different parameters before moving on to exporting via a package. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more autograph tutorials.